today we have Psalm 26 challenge. A challenge on blamelessness, a challenge on righteousness. And I want to ask you, are you able to read Psalm 26? You may wonder whether this is about English or your local language, but it's not a joking psalm. Before we delve into it, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. Your word challenges us. Your word draws us to yourself. Your word sheds light upon our lives that we may know the way to go. Now may you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 26, I found it very challenging and I'm going to read it. Read with me aloud and thereafter we shall find out what the challenge is. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consult with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are wicked schemes, whose right hands are full of bribes. But I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly, I will praise the Lord. Uh-huh, the challenge comes to you. Is that true in your life? You read so powerfully. You read as if, oh, you identify with these very things. I want you to be truthful to yourself. Is this true in your life? Uh-huh. I don't know what is happening here. I don't know in which mood is this man called David when he pens this psalm. But he actually is challenging many of us to consider whether if God actually answered this prayer and came with his torch and tested you and checked your heart and checked your mind, would he find blamelessness? Would he find righteousness? Now, we cannot delete this psalm from the Bible. It's there. And you have read it and I want you to read it again. And therefore, the way to escape the challenge is not simply to say, Oh no, it's not true of me, and therefore I cannot read this psalm. Your Bible has that psalm and you cannot delete it. The only thing you can do is to say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I want these things to be true in my life. I want when you, Lord, come to test me and examine my heart, I want you to find love, your love ever before me, walking continually in truth, 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 not sitting with deceitful men, washing my hands in innocence, innocent, both in private and in public. Loving the house of the Lord, dwelling that pla- in that place where the glory of the Lord is. I don't know whether you feel the challenge that I'm feeling. I personally feel the challenge. It's not easy. But I take it up because it's here for us. Ensuring that we live a blameless life in public. Staying away from bribes. Staying away from hatred and 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 killing people, bloodthirsty men uh, around us, people disappear, people get killed, people get injured, people get hated. 
people are crucified but that's not your portion you need to come before the lord and say i do not stay with bloodthirsty men i don't put up with them i don't condone their actions i don't put up with bribery i rather die poor i rather suffer with few things than enjoying many things that have come through dirty hands my feet stand on level ground in other words i am fair I do my best to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Friends, this psalm is very challenging. The Psalm 26 challenge is something worth taking every now and again, maybe every month or every two months, to check whether you would be able to read it aloud without shame, and maybe in the company of a few friends, and then they would say, Amen. That is true of you, Janet. That is true of you, John. That is true of you, my friend. Oh my goodness, it's a real serious challenge. But let me encourage you before we end this sharing. And I want to encourage you with a man who had that challenge, Paul the Apostle. And he decided he would not solve it by working with his own hands and working hard to keep the law. But he would solve this challenge by going to the Lord Jesus Christ who is able to clothe you with righteousness. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, and where he shows a hunger to know the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, and he says in verse 7, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to encourage you with those words. This is the kind of righteousness that I can guarantee you. For that which comes from keeping the law and that which comes from your own hard work and your works of righteousness, I'm not sure it would measure up. You need the righteousness that comes by faith through Jesus Christ. And therefore, be strengthened in your faith in following Jesus. He is the one who clothes us with righteousness and will give you the power even to do good works. I pray that you will follow this example of St. Paul and by the transforming power of Jesus Christ, you will be able to read Psalm 26 and it will be true to you and true upon you for your blessing and for the glory of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the call to righteousness, the call to blamelessness. We thank you because while we find it difficult, yet you have assured us that by faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, we are able to have that clothing of righteousness. We want to pray like St. Paul, that we want to know the Lord Jesus Christ and be found in Him. All the days of our lives we want to live in Him. Draw us to yourself, teach us and encourage us, strengthen us for the spiritual disciplines that will enable us to live in him and be found in him when he comes to take us to the eternal glory that you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you as you continue on that Psalm 26 challenge.